Okay, so now we're going to go through some examples of colons and dashes. Uh, so this will give you guys a chance to see how the main uses for colons and dashes are um, sort of, like we said, preceded by an independent clause, and then following the colon or dash is either a list or an example or an expl explanation of something that's talked about in the first part of the sentence. Um, okay, so now we'll see an example of that. U2 has done collaborations with many well-known bands and artists, colon, Green Day, Bob Dylan, and R.E.M. Okay, so that example you guys can see that following the colon is a list that gives examples of the bands that U2 has collaborated with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so now we're going to read another sentence that's an example that's just slightly different, uh, still with a colon. Uh, so U2 has done collaborations with many well-known bands and artists, colon, Green Day, Bob Dylan, R.E.M. have all worked with U2 at one time or another. So in this example, we see that instead of just a list, the colon is connecting two separate independent clauses. Um, so both halves of the sentence are complete sentences in themselves, um, but the colon is separating them. Yep, what's your question? So why not just have two separate sentences? Yeah, that's a great question. I think this is one of the things that can be sort of confusing about using colons and dashes. Um, so what we saw in that example is, I'm just going to read it one more time. Um, U2 has done collaborations with many well-known bands and artists, colon, Green Day, Bob Dylan, R.E.M., have all worked with U2 at one time or another. Um, so we can see that both independent clauses are related, um, and the second half of the sentence is sort of explaining the first half of the sentence. Um, so similar to the list, but it's just giving a little bit more information. Um, and theoretically, they could be used as just two separate sentences, but because they are so related and both independent clauses, um, it just makes sense to use the colon. Uh, another good thing to think about is that particular use of a colon is very similar to the use of a semicolon um, in that they're both two separate phrases, but one is explaining the other, um, and they're both related. So any questions about that? Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the second grammatical um, thing that we're going to talk about. Um, so we're going to talk about apostrophes, and this is, again, something that you're going to run into on the ACT. Uh, so the most important thing to know is that there are two main uses of apostrophes. Um, the first are contractions, and the second is possessive, um, or used in, at times when you're describing possession. Um, so first we're going to talk about the possessive use of apostrophes. Um, so this is to describe something that another um, person has or something um, that belongs to another person. You guys are probably very familiar with this. Um, so an example of this would be if you want to talk about the dresses that Maria owns, you could say, that's Maria's dress, and there would be a little apostrophe. And just kind of basic things to keep in mind about this is that when you're using a possessive apostrophe, um, a noun always has to follow the apostrophe because nouns are the only things that can be possessed by something else. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so now we're going to talk about contractions, and then we'll read some examples and talk about situations where this might be a little bit tricky. Um, so contractions are things like don't, can't, um, so obviously their uncontracted form is do not and cannot, um, but they're just ways to abbreviate verbs. Um, did not, didn't, things like that. Um, so times when this can get a little bit tricky is when you're using pronouns and apostrophes. Um, I know one that I always got kind of tripped up on uh, when I was learning about this was, was its, because um, its can have an apostrophe that is both possessive um, and also a contraction. Um, but both instances do not use an apostrophe. Um, so only an apostrophe is used with its if it's the, the contracted use of the apostrophe. Um, but if it's possessive, then you don't use an apostrophe. Um, so I'm going to read a sentence, and if you guys can tell me if it's um, an its that has an apostrophe or if it's an its that doesn't have an apostrophe. Okay. Uh, so the sentence is, do They Know It's Christmas, was a song recorded by many artists, including you 2 to raise funds for famine in Ethiopia. So can you guys tell if that's an it's that would use an apostrophe or one that wouldn't use an apostrophe? Apostrophe. It would use an apostrophe. Yes, right? that is correct. Um, and one way you can check this if you're ever in a situation that you're not quite sure about is you can just um, spell out what the contraction is. So in this sense, you could read it as... Um, do they know it is Christmas was a song recorded by many artists and there you can see that the sentence makes sense when you've expanded the contraction um, whereas if it wasn't it's that was used in the possessive sense obviously the it is wouldn't make sense 